Welcome back to uh, the Acoustic Shop Knows People. Are you like um, the official host or something? I am now. Us into the- I, I, I think so. I, I have taken center seat today, I and that. Uh, that now means that I, I am bumped. the host. <laughs> Sorry, you've been bumped. <laughs> you have been bumped. It's been a crazy uh, week here at the shop. It's a crazy day you can say here that at the pretty shop. Much every week that we have it's a It's true. A week. It's become my like, just official saying. statements. Whenever I do a live, it's been a crazy week here. And yet, and yeah. somehow it actually tops itself. Do you guys think that's from week to week? just life, or that we're bad managers and can't handle oh, both? Well, <laughs> mostly we made a lot managers. of bad decisions, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this marriage, is about. children, businesses. Um, <laughs> Oh, we just right. made a lot of bad clothing choices. It's awful. We're reaping I what folks at home so. can see John's shirt, but that's one of those. What are you bad talking decisions. about? This is fabulous. It's, it's, very, it's um, it's very anyway. <laughs> it's um, he said. Ouch. Anyway, no, I think so, part of it is just we we never just like relax and we never settle for hey things are running smooth. Let's not try to add one more thing to it. Let's do but something. But I think new. that's the thing is this bad business bad. right here at this stage right now does not allow for a sit back and wait for the next. Uh, solution thing to That's appear. not the world of retail right now, unfortunately. Yeah. I think yeah, that's why we keep I growing. I really though. wish we would have started in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it seems, from what I hear back then, it was pretty easy and you just kind of sold things and you didn't have Should to compete with turn anybody. Turn the vibration off these phones like yeah, exploding over here. I think it must be all the millions of dollars just that got all oh, my... De- my bank deposit just went through what? Well, Irish wow, wow. guitars well, called. Well, guys, how, is it when they, how is it they Somebody's deposit money in your guitar. bank and it goes to negative? <laughs> <laughs> how is that even possible? <laughs> it keeps happening to me. Anyway, it's good to see you guys uh, as yeah. if we don't see you every day. I, anyway. don't, I don't mean to complain, but we're tired. You want to know what I'm excited about? <laughs> it is uh, officially camping season, and I'm going camping this weekend. I think we missed like I'm the not. best two weeks of camping because this last two weeks, it was like a high of Jeremy, 73 degrees. Yeah, I went three weeks ago, and it was really, really nice. Do we need to talk about how Jeremy still is like this holdout? I found of, you a camper. Of I will not camp unless it's in a, a camp in a tent. It was held in good shape, but it was from the tent from camping the 90s. is still officially camping. Has an air conditioner. <laughs> the others are only twelve hundred bucks, Jeremy. And then also, I, mean, I would buy a camper, pay for it all year round, and use it four times a year. It just didn't make sense get, to me. I'm thinking I'm, about buying a camper and then doing this rental thing. I'm, I talked to somebody I know that, that does this, ooh, and they paid off their camper. I'm so scared of what they somebody will a camper damage BMW, they handle it for you. It's got insurance. Right, maybe. Air camper. But l- let's get back to Jeremy. And uh, uh, not, Dutch oven not. and a tent is the only way to camp. That's Dutch what he, oven and <laughs> a tent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't need a tent to do that, but whatever. Hey, guys, that's the real camping. You just get some hot coals, and you start... You <laughs> Stack three of those tall. It's been a while since I've done that. Yeah, that's fun. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I am not. not Dave, but we lost half our audience right now. Let's, no, let's move on to what the subject matter of today camping? is. No, not camping. What are we going to talk about? Uh, here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this new thing that has exploded in the guitar slash, I guess, musical instrument world, which is manufacturer direct sale. This has definitely changed our industry and everybody is talking about it. So we're going to give you guys an idea of what we think. If everybody's sales. talking about it, we might as well jump in. Jump yeah, in I the guess pool. so. Take me away because I can be the way. Let somebody want to let go and I can have my way. So direct sales is happening so right now. Not like sales like, hey, 10% off. We're talking about consumers can go directly selling, to the manufacturer to direct. buy. Yeah. yeah so when we started this industry or started in this industry. No, we started the whole music <laughs> retail industry before <laughs> us. Exactly people day. had to build their own instruments if they wanted to play music. In case people don't know, this is our 10th year. Um, and when we actually came in here. The idea of internet sales was still like a, uh, oh my God, n- this is going to change the entire world. Nobody is going to be able to handle this internet. I don't need a computer. Yeah. No, and it, it was surprising to us because we, in our band, did quite a bit of stuff online. We were, we were pretty proactive online. And I think the first time attending NAM and seeing some of these like legacy, legacy stores that were still doing paper receipts and using paper credit card readers and, uh, you know, the old. I remember they, those. Those I miss, were fun. Okay. I, miss, I miss the uh, uh, modems Carbon to get copy. on the internet. I like be on the road and using so, the 16. So we went to NAM, and so many of them were not even thinking about selling online. And one of the big arguments was nobody's going to buy a high end instrument or even you know, a five hundred dollar guitar without getting to play it. You have to have it in your hands. So the the local mom and pop shop is safe because everyone wants to have the guitar in their hands before they buy it. I think that has proved to be wrong, and they they didn't think of the fact that consumers have gotten really comfortable at buying things online. 
if you do a good job presenting well, and it. And businesses have found a good way of, of, of integrating that into their business model. Uh, you look at the the uh, the mattress industry, they integrate that, the sure. trial period, because obviously nobody's going to buy a mattress and return it, but they don't want to buy it without trying it. And so. I got to say, it's pretty gross it's, to go into the mall and exactly. just lay down on a mattress that 30 people have been laying on <laughs> that day. So yeah. all of a sudden, anyway, we have Jeremy we the germaphobe. Mattresses, but <laughs> they, they didn't realize that businesses could build that. We, we can build in a 14-day return policy into our business and not lose our our margins and I think lose the or, or but let's, let's, be abused let's, by let's the consumer break that yeah, down or, just a little bit because two things had to happen in, for that to be in existence one was the idea that uh people wouldn't buy it online at all because they had to play it first yeah and that would then force that still exist that's yes. still then but what it forced was for retailers to recognize all right we need to come up with solutions to make that feasible and that was where return policies got more liberal and let's face it as much as everybody wants to complain about amazons and walmarts and all these kind of companies out there answers to the end of that Businesses again, John. no at Walmart, and and Walmart, Amazon's is the and types Walmart's of businesses is. like a wall. Never mind. Anyway. anyway, those were the ones that kind of forced everybody to recognize that this can be done and, and this is should the be done. Yeah, yeah so right. Go. Because it, and then what sped it all up was we had the pandemic, which then forced people like even our parents who had never really thought very comfortably about buying something online. Now all of a sudden we're loving this idea of being able to put in an order and either have it go picked up or have it delivered directly to their house. That changed everything, right? So then I think that's where it changed for a lot of these people was recognizing that now that's comfortable, that's easy, uh, and then the manufacturers go, wait, we want a piece of that. I think, yeah, yeah it was probably, a, and I think Fender was one of the first ones to do it. And that was pretty early on to when we were in business and we're like, yeah, we'll see how this cool. goes. You know, Fender, it really made sense with Fender because ago, it had a lot yes. of, uh, a lot of like package things. You could buy the guitar and amp and a, a whole guitar pack. And it definitely felt like the type of product you would buy on an Amazon or an online retail big box store thing. Uh, I think a lot of people always thought, well, the big, you know, acoustic manufacturers and the big guitar manufacturers won't do that because they rely so much on their dealers. And they even told their dealers. Well, like, and there's also that big difference between, and so this has been said thousands of times over, there's a huge difference between an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar. Absolutely. Consistency. Um, yeah. And consistency, yeah. And, and again, I'm not fact. saying this to dog on acoustic no. or electric people no. out there at all. They know it. But there's only so much variance. I mean, I, I've watched a lot of other channels that do exclusively uh, electric uh, guitars, and and even they will admit from guitar to guitar, way less variance. Um, yeah. Not to say that there's none, but it's yeah. so much lighter than it is with an acoustic instrument. Um, so right. that does change the game a so little bit. So that, yeah, that was easier for Fender to do because, I mean, you buy one, especially the stuff that sells really well online. You buy one Squire, they're all the same. I mean, it is what it is. Squire packs are I mean, squire packs. they do have their acoustic guitar, so Jay. Well, I know. But, but I, I do they know. Don't count. They don't count. Didn't, Let's just be real. They, they didn't don't affect count. us at all because we didn't do electrics. <laughs> but I do know there was a lot of other stores that their hair was on fire that you also yeah. misbrand that that's a scary thing. for a large portion of their sales a lot of people sell tons of fender guitars and they all of a sudden thought there's gonna they're gonna suck all of our sales and from a lot of those that i heard from it did affect them for a little bit at first but it almost seems like it's a different they're not stealing market share as much as they are maybe niching out a I want to get well, different back to that. I, I want to cover some more stuff before Can we I get into that Go i want to be i want to take charge right on this portion Good. well let's let's talk about the things that that supposedly would go wrong with with uh, manufacturers going uh, direct. Should we get a whiteboard One out? of the first things, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> if you look on your screen here, no. Uh, one of the big, like Jeremy said, one of the big arguments was if they go direct, it's going to take away my market share. It's going to be a competitor to me. It, I'll lose sales. That's... I, that doesn't make sense to me anymore. And that's... Why? Our mentality... Well, Because okay. online, I mean... Exactly. Our mentality has always been we're competing with everyone. We're competing with True. everyone all the time. D our next door neighbor and, and Amazon, they're all competing, but there's a large enough market and you need to work to win that customer. To discern how and, you are and different. Exactly. And my my argument with that is, so what? You're competing with Fender. You're competing with Fender. You're competing with Sweetwater. You're competing with Amazon, eBay, Musician Walmart, friend. Musician's Friend. Every large, uh, there's so many competitors you can find. There's a never ending list of them. So why fret about that? Quit ah, worrying about that. Said that. Ah, 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 ah. I knew it was coming. Why worry about that? Why not just make sure you work hard to be 
winning those customers. Yeah, well, that's I, what frustrates me. That when was, I hear these that was the, the argument when the internet came out in general. I mean, I talked to so many retail I it was stores. Whether Al Gore made it or not was the main. <laughs> I mean, for internet for retail sales in uh, uh, the guitar world. The argument from a lot of these people was, uh, you know, I can't compete with these big boys out here. That's not fair. I'm, you know, they're going to beat us up and they're going to beat us up in price and all that stuff. What we learned really, really quick was uh, we need to out customer service them. Um, Amazon. And out expertise Let's, them. Yeah, and and mm -hmm. we need to do better than they do. And and it's exactly. not to say what can we they do don't they do a great job. Let's face it. As much as we all want to sit there and dog on the big boys, the guitar centers, uh, let's go even further, Amazon and Walmart, uh, yes, they're big corporate evil people that uh, that ruin the world. But the fact is, is they do some amazing things that we all Smart would things. not live without. There's none of us that have not got used to the idea of getting on the Internet and seeing something show up in a very short amount of time. And uh, the ease of finding way. it, you know, yeah. just being able to find that one oddball item that we would have taken driving to 30 stores to find Absolutely. locally. You can just in 10 seconds find 10 options for it, choose your best shipping option, and have the next day. So that argument was being brought up is like Amazon is going to beat us all. They're just going to beat us all. And eventually they're going to take correct. over the guitar world and, and all that kind of stuff. They will always win. But and but what I think those companies didn't count on, and again, that's not saying that we're going to win the big market share that they are. These are Multi hundred billion First dollar, trillion dollar company. company. Yeah, uh, this is m ridiculous amounts of money that they're going to talk about. But again, they can't service everybody. I mean, that they didn't keep in it, or maybe they did, um, was that there's going to be people that will refuse to one to buy from those companies because they don't want to support that feeling. Wonderful. I love those people. Those are some of my favorite people. Uh, the two, second thing is they didn't take into consideration that some people are willing to pay a little bit more of a premium for a better service when they get it. And right now we're not talking about even charging more. No, I mean, I'm the, just talking. When we're talking direct to manufacture, they're not undercutting their dealers on price. They're well, just, they're, they're, that, that should be a topic. We're, we're going to come into that. We'll cover that. To, that the, con, to the consumer, they're not normally selling it cheaper yeah. than they're allowing the dealer to sell it. But on, uh, uh, well, just we'll we'll cover hold that your, hold your horses yeah, let now. Let me get my point. <laughs> But see now you made me lo lose I'm my sorry. point. Anyway, the uh, where were we going with this? Not not cutting discounts to the consumer. So it's not even picture. about whether they're competing with them on price. It's about they're they're opening up a new selling market online. The the same thing that has been going on with whatever music store across the country that's doing a better job of getting word out that I have the same product that everybody else have. What they don't the big ones aren't really able to do is customize the the photos experience. for each the experience for the selling experience like a fender and an amazon on scale that they do they don't have time to it's photograph to give a review or to give a description of the product to make a video about that product or now eventually even, robots or is going to make that, even that talk to the customer when the customer calls them to say <laughs> what do you think the low end is on this what is They're the action build a at the 12th fret that actually strums it yeah. every time and they can actually hear it. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah i, I agree see what you're saying exactly it doesn't scale like so, it doesn't no, scale no, for no. them the way that selling so i see where this is going this is going towards and i think all of us are going to end up agreeing on this that we're not like totally scared of this idea. But I do want to play devil's advocate here, okay? Because I want to get this argument Let me interrupt there. with you a bunch of random <laughs> thoughts so that you can lose your train. <laughs> do you like trees? Devil's did you miss your train? <laughs> I did. Devil's advocate here. Two things. One, it was pointed out, uh, at least from one manufacturer, that during holiday sales, they did discount to a point where it was lower than well, what let's cover, some I want to cover that in the second or third argument because we got to remember, we're supposed to keep on track on these. Okay. The first argument was... Was, whiteboard. We need a whiteboard. Yeah. Whiteboard. What was the first argument again? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we've covered the first one, which was uh, we can't compete with them because they're larger. Yep. Uh, but I mean, that's just adding another competitor to the sales channel. It's just like somebody opened up a store down the street. I agree. It's no different. You're going to compete the same way, or we at least will. And have, they, uh, have they done this like in keyboards and stuff for years? Oh, they've like done it in everything. Yamaha and, and a lot well, of those keyboard companies. Consumer, you can buy consumer that same manufacturer keyboard. or uh, consumer electronics. It's, I mean, there's no competing well, with those guys. Well, here's the deal, though, and Samsung I watched this on another. I watched this sales. on another uh, channel that was talking about the same subject. You watch other channels? Yeah, I do, because I, I don't want to watch you. Um, and they pointed this out. Uh, this is actually not a thing that is done in some industries and not possible. They bring up the uh, car industry. Oh yeah, car industry. This 
was brought up and has been tried many a times by some of the uh, main. I've, I've been listening to uh, Tesla versus uh, Detroit. This is the point. Uh, uh, podcast. So yeah, and I Tesla is trying to this. sell directly, and they've actually succeeded with it to some degree, only because they were an upstart of a nobody that came well, into this industry. Well, they found weird strong. ways to get around it because they'd like they they do uh, they do uh, what do they call them uh, Tesla Experience Centers in the states that that had lobbies enough that you couldn't sell direct. They have experience, and then you'd order it there. And then they'd ship it over the over yeah they ship it a, direct here. There's an argument it's a here. Weird thing. The dealerships uh, have sort of a conglomerate, uh, a community that works throughout the U.S. And they get together and they like this was pointed out. Could a manufacturer like Chevy come out and say, "Hey, we're going to sell direct, guys"? They said no because the dealerships, as an organized community, well, would lawsuits would be they've absolutely been around for hundred years or so because so. they, they've invested. And their argument is, and again, there's an argument to be had here in the uh, guitar world too that it absolutely points point to point, which is we built these brands, we helped to build mm -hmm. the retail landscape that you guys have, Fair enough, the, the ability risk. to. Put these in the in the hands of people and tell them what the features that they want to see. And we helped you as manufacturers be able to go, this is what the customer wants to see. And we've done this and we invested millions upon millions of dollars in doing this. Point. And then you come out and do this. So the argument, and it's a sound argument, is the guitar industry has the exact same except, problem. Except they don't have the organization. The organization yeah, is they not there. Have, they have been so around so around should it be? So I know we're, going, we're we totally need to get lobbyists. derailing. Let's, let's not go there. We're not going to get lobbyists. <laughs> we'll leave that for point five that will be in a future episode. But currently it's a disorganized bunch of competitors. And I don't think that's going to not. So probably. are we ready for the point two that I, I, I hear a lot about this? Okay, I'm ready point for two it. is um, why would a retailer or a, uh, a customer buy from a retailer rather than directly from the source. Which side are you taking experts? on this? Well, just, I, argue, this is the I can argue both sides question. of this one. I'm posing the question that I hear online. It, don't you think that a customer would rather buy directly from the manufacturer because they are the experts, they, they know how to provide the best service for their product? My experience in this industry so far is there are two types of buyers. There are the types of buyers, and we've seen this, and, and I find it, you know, it blew my mind when I first ran into this, which is the guy who comes in or gal uh, comes into the store and looks at a model and goes, I love this guitar, but I want the one in the back that hasn't been opened yet. Not understanding that this industry is, is a this little different. Blade? We want one that has been gone through, made sure everything is right and all that. But there are customers that believe that with these guitars, a $10,000 guitar, they want to see the one that's in the back that has never been opened before. They, that customer is going to want to buy. That mentality makes more sense to them to buy directly from the manufacturer. Because, But do we want to tell them why better? they're wrong? I can tell them why well, they're that, wrong. But That's a customer we probably wouldn't have had anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And for those, that and that, makes that's no probably, sense for an organic piece of material. But that probably goes back to that first question: is you know how much this affects a dealer? Is if you're the type of dealer that just warehouses instruments and doesn't inspect them, and we've ordered some of those for some of our online tests. Sure. We did that guitar test and got one of those from an online retailer that obviously hadn't checked that guitar. If you're one, if you're one of those type of retailers, this could have an effect on you. I oh, think if you're the type of re retailer that we we let customers though that sometimes a manufacturer will send us an instrument and we get it and we go through and go this nope. is going back to the manufacturer nope, I can't put this happening. out on my floor I, I don't want to put the time into fixing the problem that shouldn't have arrived here anyway so we're, we're kind of like that gatekeeper I'm even talking about some of our best stuff that uh, some yeah. of our best brands I've had this happen with I, I had one today we were working on a top custom build that we got to get tuners replaced on I've had I've had two. Different manufacturers that we have done this on uh, with uh, these are these are twelve thousand dollar guitars and and we've had this happen. So, so, right, so that ahead. kind of reputation that you build of doing that sort of thing, I think, insulates you a little bit from somebody that wants to just buy it directly from the manufacturer because I mean, they're not doing that. They're, yeah, those yeah, instruments are getting to us. That. They can't. I mean, we've seen that again. Making that's, that's why they're coming a, to us yeah. like that. I mean, they're, in they're, a car dealership, and I've they know seen we're that same deal. Back. I I prefer to have one that I know the car dealership went through and made sure they did their inspections and checks on that than have it land yeah. at me. You know, I know that. Uh, 
Because it just makes so, more sense. So I think answering question number two, why why wouldn't they buy directly? An educated consumer would probably realize, I trust these guys that have that local shop. I can go back to sure. them if I have a problem. I can speak to somebody there and say, hey, is this supposed to be the way it is? Rather than, than actually talking to the, the manufacturer and say, oh, yeah, it's supposed to have that buzz on the 12th fret. That's why we build those. You know, you have that guy that's yeah. kind of your, your intermediary that's going to give you an honest opinion and take care of it and get it back to the manufacturer. That brings issue. a really good point. I don't know if this is a specific category. We shouldn't leave that on. But the honesty, like a, the, a in, the independent uh, source uh, for in between, the go-between. Because, I mean, we see it all the time with our manufacturers. They wouldn't be making their product if they didn't think it was the best. And if you're looking for something and you want knowledge and to get an expert opinion on it, you're not going to go to the person that built that product. Probably. Because <laughs> they're going to say... Uh, well, well, absolutely, this is the best one. You're yeah. not, there's no way you're going to... We've, so we've taken no some heat in some there. of our video reviews yeah. from these manufacturers saying, well, why didn't you... Guys, you know, It's supposed to be that way. Why'd you guys say that on, why would on you, the air? Why would I want to address, by the way. <laughs> you people out there, I every time I give a review of a brand we're carrying, I beat the crap out of that company. I really do give them we don't way less. Beat I, them, but no, I mean, I give like it. compared no, to the No, I'm ones talking about the, the ones that I don't carry. Yeah. The ones that we carry, I hold way higher we, standard to than the ones that I don't, because I feel it's it's our job to we not try to be independent, lean, but we try to be it, as we lean we lean less uh, loyal than we uh, a lot of our I manufacturer could. manufacturers <laughs> would like. But it is obvious that they always get on us about that, you know, because they obviously think that their product should have been number one, and then they get mad at us because they think that we're intentionally not sure. saying they're number one. So anyway, that independent so, insulator is a very important thing. We're ready for number three. Oh, I got an argument. Argument? Yes. Okay, All right. Which one? Is it this under is, this category? This may be a number three right here. Are you okay, ready for yes. a number three? This is one of the arguments that I'm hearing from the manufacturers right now, and I want to blow this one up because I'm tired of hearing this one, which is Ooh. they think they're safe Time because uh, they're rate. saying – Both uh, the companies, by the way, in case you don't already know this, in our industry right now, so far, the companies that have decided to go direct are Fender First. Taylor followed this up, which I thought was funny because I talked to so many people in the acoustic guitar world that were like, we'll never see guitars, acoustic guitars ever do this. It's going to be impossible. And the first thing I said was the first brand that will, it'll be Taylor. And when that domino falls, everybody else will do it. So Taylor fell. Gibson is going to be doing it very shortly. They're sort of doing it already right now, but they haven't officially created a source for it. And Martin just recently announced uh, that they are going to be going direct. And that's the ones in our industry that we know directly right now. But so far, every one of those has come out with a report and their sales team. And it's funny that they all have the exact same number, which is this is only equated. Is this going to the question always comes to them is, is this going to change everything? Are you guys think that it's going to ruin us as independent uh, sellers, Dealers. dealers? And they'll always come back with going saying, we are seeing less than 1% of our sales at, at the direct, uh, from direct sales. Direct channels. I want to blow that up a little bit because... I don't think they put the effort into that if it was Well, true. it's 1%, but let's also talk about this. They've got thousands of dealerships all over the world. And 1% of that is a lot of guitar. That's more than our shop and probably about 10 other shops combined to do 1%. Probably right? That. Yeah. It's it's that's a crazy number. That's probably their one of their top dealers. And then let's go let's let's take that even further which is where it really blows my mind. This has only been 3 or 4 months yeah. if not 6. This hasn't even really trickled an option. to the consumer that I really think will take advantage of buying from. Yeah, let's give a, one holiday season in there and see what happens because this will consum- bring us to our next point. <laughs> the consumer that's going to buy direct from a manufacturer is not the already well-versed in, I've already been buying from my favorite dealer. I recognize all those points that you just brought out. The consumer that's mostly going to buy from directly from a consumer Right now, doesn't even know that they have that option. It's gonna be the yeah. search engine, and and I think that's gonna change. holiday season, and that's where this this next this next point, which is the one place I feel like this is an unfair advantage that they have, and that what we can't compete with is the fact that they can discount more than they can even sell them to us for. Yes, we're seeing uh, Fender has done it very bad, which we don't handle. We don't deal with Fender, but we've heard 
some big stories about how the fact that not only does Fender put on their sales when it comes to time, especially this holiday season is going to be crazy for these, but they'll put on a sale to the customer. So you'll get a discount there, which will end up putting it right about where the uh, retailer could buy it. Um, But then they always and always offer a first time buyers 10 to 15% off on top of that, which we are not allowed to do. It, um, it's kind of so, it's it's a actually very mean way they do this. They get the the dealerships to make a big buy, and they like yeah. to say, "All right, holiday season's coming around the corner. You're going to need to buy 50 of these. Here's your special dealer pricing, and you know here's what you're going to sell for. You're going to have a 40 percent margin." And then they they sell all those to their dealers, and they go, "All right, direct to consumer. We're going to now discount 25 percent." And then they call the the store that they just sold these to and say, "Hey, guess what? You guys get a map holiday. You can <laughs> you can sell this guitar. Yeah, you can do exactly what we want for doing. less than you just purchased it for. We're allowing you to advertise a lower price." But, you know, you, you ended up paying more than we're actually going to be selling it to the consumer. I for. love that one. Map holidays are my favorite so, thing So, technically, to see. they're not selling it any cheaper than the store could sell it for. Yeah. They just, it, the store would lose money on those So, sales. that's the scary point on this one. That's the one place where I feel they're going to have a competitive advantage that we can't ever uh, match, is the fact that they can do all that and and get away with it. Obviously, nobody's going to hold them to map anyway, so who cares, I, but... Is that enough, though, for us to be fretting here and worrying about it and stop? Thank you. I love that. Uh, Worrying ourselves to death every day about this? I'm not going to worry myself every day because uh, here's the one thing. We've only been in business 10 years. Here's the one thing that I have learned. When we see an obstacle like this show up, in three years, it's a totally different obstacle that I will have to worry about and find. Whether it's a pandemic or loss of inventory or finding new ways to do, we always have something that's going to be there. That said, the fact is, is I do think this is a major thing. I'm not scared that it will absolutely destroy a business like ours, but I do know that it will destroy a lot of independent dealers I think that it's do dro- exist. I think it comes down to how do you handle situations like this? Uh, you how know, do you, there help, you have, handle a problem like Maria? I, I mean, mean, honestly, Maria is a problem. But that's for another podcast. Why did we even bring that? Yeah, but okay, go for you it. You do a phrase like I just it kicks a song in my head. <laughs> so, Glimpse into Jeremy's brain right there. <laughs> but it comes down to how people handle these things and a, and a business that I think that will thrive and survive through things like this is a business that looks at this and doesn't say, well, I give up. I obviously can't win. They look at it and say, all right, how can we do better? Or how can we stand uh, even in the small pie that we'll have left after uh, the consumers take 90% of sales? How can I win that small piece of 10% uh, there? And, or you'll have the people that say, I give up. I can't compete. I move on. I'm or threat, threaten this major, or, yeah, major or say, oh, I'm, I'm cancel all my orders, and that's really going to hurt that them was, so much. You that's know. the silliest thing that that any of these uh, dealerships could have done. Uh, again, I'm, I'm glad they did because that means that they're no longer competing they, with me. Um, but uh, but uh, that was silly. So like you know, there's taking on a Goliath is possible. But you can't necessarily take them on and beat them, but you can sure find an avenue that they're not living in and try to figure out how to make your business better. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's I, like I said, it goes back to my first point. It's no different than competing with eBay, Amazon, Walmart, and uh, and maybe in this you boutique world, others. Yeah, exactly. In it's this just boutique another world, one of those. most of our small boutique builders are also doing direct yeah. special True. orders. Like most of them are doing custom orders directly to cons- consumers. But a lot of those consumers will go through us because they want, again, somebody to communicate on the same playing field or level with somebody that can hold the the builders to uh, details that you're looking for in a better way than the consumer can directly. And again, I think that's where maybe we're a little bit insulated in that. I still, uh, you know, will it affect sales? Maybe on some of the things. Luckily, right now, we're not directly uh, competing with some of those brands. But I still don't, like Jason said, it could be another really good, successful music store moving down anywhere in the United States. They could be shipping from anywhere. So why is that any different than the manufacturer doing it directly? Here's who I think it's going to officially affect. The music stores, and we've all been in them, and and, uh, I'm not just picking on music stores. I'm talking about any kind of retailer that built a business and this was a 30, 40 year old model of stack them high, watch them fly. I buy boxes of the most popular uh, models. I just keep them in a box and I bring them out every once in a while and, you know, make a big sale on them and go. 
Those guys should be scared. They should absolutely be scared. Um, but but they should have been scared. Anyway. They should have been scared point. a long time ago. That's why. Exactly. That, I mean, obviously, those are the that ones was that the are going business now. That, before this happened, yes, so. that was the uh, the people who were scared of the internet in the first place. Those most of them have kind of figured out their way that nah, this ain't going to work for me. That is a different business model. And uh, and again, this just comes down to that. We're continually finding a new uh, foe to fight and and figuring out how to get around it. You know, if it's not this this year, direct sales from a manufacturer, it's going to be something else that we're going to see, which is going to be uh, UPS and FedEx no longer taking our shipments because the boxes are too. B- I I just put that out there, and that's probably well, going to be. Thanks, John. I'm worrying about that. Man. <laughs> that changed our whole marketing plan. More like UPS and FedEx won't take our stuff because uh, they're too busy shipping Martin and Taylor's. Well, well, there could consumer. be that too. Yeah, uh, I you know. So I don't know what see. Jason's fourth and fifth and sixth points are. I didn't have any. I was done actually. That's it. I've, I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Two that I would like to maybe brief talking points. One is this unfair to the the one that brought you to the dance? So yes. Are the manufacturers the one that dance the one that brought you to the football game? Brought you the, <laughs> hot dogs? Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I if I was a dealer for thirty years and I've had this relationship with this brand and I've gone through them pressuring me that oh last year you did this many sales I want I need you to order ten percent more than that and call me up on the phone about not you know selling this at the right price your numbers aren't right so you for 30 years you've dealt with this and been their source of income for that i could see this being a major slap in the face it also absolutely a slap in the face we can do it better than you or we're going to compete with you but we still want you to order as much as you did last year from us i wonder how much that's going to change the dynamic and the leverage that they're going to have with these big dealers and when the dealers go well you i mean I'll stay. I'll be a dealer, and I'll do as what I'm doing. But I'm not going to let you pressure me into this. Yeah, I'm not going to let you give you guys me quarters anymore. Yeah, you you've got an outlet. You, you got this new guitar it. you want sold? Uh, go so ahead. So it might sell. come back and slap them in the face when they come back with that, and they're like, "Well, I guess we don't have leverage anymore on these people because they're mad at us." And then my second side point to that is: is this better for the manufacturers? I mean, they. I think part of this came out of COVID when the the demand was so high, everybody's like, order, order, order. And this was part of their sales staff's problem of the manufacturers telling all the dealers, order more than you think you need because we can't get them. And when they arrive, you know, you're going to need them because consumers want them. And all of a sudden that spigot got turned off as far as the consumer demand, but all of a sudden those guitars that they had built up production are now stacking up in their warehouses. And I think a lot of them are scared that they've got a cash flow crunch that if they don't get these sold, they're going to... There's an argument there. If they don't do this, we may not even have those manufacturers in five to 10 years. So they can't just sit on a warehouse full of instruments that aren't selling. They've got to find a way to get those out. And if if the dealers aren't ordering them because the consumers aren't, then they're going to say, well, we'll try to offload them directly to the consumer. And there's a big question there that I've I've had in my mind and I've heard. Is this a temporary thing? Are they really going to be able to, uh, are they jumping into this thinking, yeah, we can sell our, we, we know how to sell. We know how to be retailers. We can do this. Are they going to get into this and then a couple years later realize, oh boy, we're losing money. I don't Possible. have the staff to handle it. It's not working out. The, uh, the returns are not. Uh, the, the returns are greater than I expected. Um, I feel like that's going to be a major uh, hurdle that they're going to have to cross. Uh, the whole entire customer service side of this is going to be something that they, and I'm not saying they may, they may have already figured this out and got really good at it and have the infrastructure there already, but knowing how their customer service worked for most of these companies with the actual vent, uh, dealers, I know how that customer service was, and if that's what they're going to give to you guys, the consumers, good luck. <laughs> the only I'm, downside of that is they, they may burn <laughs> bridges with that consumer and that brand and we yeah. can't really fix that well there's that too the acoustic shop knows people is brought to you by the fine folks at the acoustic shop there's fine people over there have you guys ever heard of a mandolin mm-hmm. if so you should already be in the car driving to the acoustic shop if not you should be on the world wide web searching up the shop.com if the answer is no then you should go listen to a mandolin then get back to step one and continue through the rest of the steps as always, please drive safely. Sure. All right. Let's uh, interrupt this uh, program a little bit here. We're going to take a little break here in the middle of it and Thank uh, do a little segment. It's one that, that we like to call. Uh, are you introducing your <laughs> Anyway, this is a little segment that I'd like to call uh, Review the AI. Um, right. AI is becoming a new thing. Yeah. We're using AI a lot here at the shop. Uh, I like to call them I. 
AI. AI? Um, we use AI a lot to write uh, certain product descriptions or blogs or whatever or comments or uh, not comments, but uh, descriptions sure. of a video. I so to write recipes we're using for AI is a big deal and it's kind of scary. Do whatever it tells But me. it's also kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it, it can be. Anyway, so we're going to do a little segment called Review the AI. Cue the theme music, Jeremy. <laughs> Review the AI. Dot dot com. Com. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, this week we're going to use a little bit of AI. So I had uh, AI write our first podcast was with Alan Bartram. So let you me, all know him. Let me interrupt well, you because you? You're, you're stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we, before we really started diving into the world of AI, I just wanted to say that. Um, that I can't wait for the people to say, quit being mean to the little guy or big <laughs> guy. Pick it on your little brother. <laughs> um, no, we, we went, I'd see some articles on the best mandolin uh, available. And I start reading, it's like, things this is saying, or things in this article are not written by a human. They make zero sense. No. And we're going to start throwing some of those into this as well, right? Please. Because yeah, we'll I love some, some of those. those. Okay. We're going to find whatever whatever is written by AI. We'll have fun with whatever it. Whatever tickles our funny we'll AI even make our, bone. We'll have AI. The, the, the worst part of that, this one is, before we get into this one, uh, the no, best, worst part about that is stupid. that you have those reviews and there are people that actually believe those and rec they think they're actually written by somebody. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. anyway. So AI is fun, but it could also be a little uh, glitchy. Dumb. A little off. Uh, dumb. So this is uh, our first episode with Alan Bartram. And we have a program that actually writes some AI stuff for me. It actually writes a bio of the guest. It listens to the podcast, writes a bio, writes a description, writes talking points. It's pretty great, but sometimes, sometimes it, gets it has wrong. a hiccup. So <laughs> it it wrong. anyway, this is the, the bio that came from AI on Alan Bartram. And if you guys so, haven't listened to that episode, please do yeah, so. Please he had a few technical issues sense. with his All equipment. Right, so Alan Bartram is an innovative problem solver who rose to fame using his resourceful, <laughs> resourcefulness with outdated technology. Oh, correct. Starting True. on a 10-year-old Chromebook <laughs> and an outdated MacBook Pro. I think it was he, his 10-year-old's Chromebook. He, pro, he pushed the limits of what was possible. <laughs> Even building makeshift tools like an arm to hold his phone while charging. It's <laughs> a great tool. Challenges ranging from technical uh, troubles to fine report or to fire reports. I don't know where that even came from, but <laughs> always perseveres with a can-do attitude. Yes, he does. His de determination and cre creativity have earned him a strong reputation in the tech world. Dang right. <laughs> Alan Bartram. Alan, which, Alan Bartram, I mean, the tech giant. I mean, if you listen to the first <laughs> part of that, the first yeah. 10 minutes of the episode is Alan saying, guys, I can't figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Help. I mean... I, that would be a fun little podcast to listen to, but it's well, that, definitely not what happened. Well, there so, you have sometimes it. Sometimes it gets uh, it wrong. Yeah, yeah, there you have it. It is uh, AI review. It's not our AI. overlord yet, but it will be. So <laughs> there you have it. Review the AI. Now back to our regular scheduled programming. There's so many unknowns to this entire question, and that's why, you know, I did. When this was first brought to my attention, I got really freaked out. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie and try to pretend like, oh, we're insulated from this. I never was felt like I was insulated from this. But the only thing that has kept me from losing my mind when it comes to, you know, because yeah, for well, you, don't just be very detailed on what part of your mind. <laughs> yeah, you for right those now. of you who don't know, my job is usually uh, inventory and, and purchasing and mind. all that and losing my mind was recognizing that there's nothing I can do about it at this point. We can see what they can do. I, think I, can I told see you that. so many failures that they're possible that they may or may not have put into uh, their pl business plan. Who knows what this is going to be? And there's no use freaking out about it until it actually. That's been my argument to you all us. along. Every done one of the many conversations we had about this is, what do we do about it? Do we do we give up or do we sit down and say this is going to end us? Do we unionize? Yes. Or do we keep which side are you on? Which side are you on? Or do we keep? Thank you, Jeremy. There's very few people that Never are going to get that reference. Good job. Or Jared. do we just keep doing what we're doing and do it better and keep improving upon what we do? That so, brings me to my final point. <laughs> That was going to be my final point, too. <laughs> so for the consumer, is this a better thing? I say yes. Do so, you? I do, because it's, it's, it's going to do two things. If somebody is that type that just wants to go direct to the manufacturer and get an easy purchase and do that, and they've been looking for a Martin and say, I bought this directly from Martin, that, you know, good for them. Congratulations. It's also going to make the rest of the industry that actually cares about it step up their game and do a better job at what they're doing. And we've seen this directly with the – 
with the territories, there is a really, and we've have some other stores we know that are they get into this thing where I own this brand, mm -hmm. nobody else is allowed to sell it, so I don't have to Until do a good comes job. Somebody along and kicks them on, off their throne. Yeah, yeah they, they would have there, and for people not familiar, there's kind of territories where nobody else could have a store in that territory that sells the same brand. We're protecting that so that we're helping you sell guitars, and your competitor you don't oversaturate the your market. competitor across the street can't sell this guitar. That could be very good for a, a dealer to if they're really servicing that that brand and doing a good job. But there are some dealers out there that just go, I don't need to do a good job because nobody else is allowed to sell these. I'm the only I already and I I saw the Coca-Cola versus Pepsi Wars thing on on podcast and they had a lot of the same thing where it was just like I own this brand nobody else can sell anything else in this area I don't have to do a good job with it I think now that the internet's in there and you're having to compete with a the manufacturer so directly a capitalist is what he's telling us mm, it, it's never been an, an easy capitalist. you can't protect we know where the majority of our money goes <laughs> somebody <laughs> and this, this, a new tax this is why they have <laughs> antitrust laws and, and things like that where you can't have complete ownership over an area or the entire u.s because when you don't have somebody to compete with then you can not do a good job at taking care of your customers you can raise prices however you want so i i think in the end People that pay attention to it and do a better job and say, I better step up my game, that's in the end going to help the consumer. So what you're saying is not necessarily that buying it from that deal is going to be better for the consumer. What you're saying is this competition end, will help. force a better marketplace for the consumer, not just buying direct from them, but it's going to force the marketplace I, to be I better. I take a more I'll pessimistic view you. than Jeremy on this. All right, go ahead. I don't think it's, I don't think it's any different. Honestly, I don't think it... Uh, can I say damn on this? <gasps> oh, I don't think a damn thing's going to change what? in our industry. Honestly, I think the people that were that were uh, archaic in their business model are going to stay the same and go out of business or or have their little niche of the corner of the country and sell as they do. I think the only the only difference I can see it doesn't affect us all that much. It takes a small it percentage. Of, it takes it just, no different than another person no. opening up a large menu. Or Which a I'd large be mad about that retailer. <laughs> Oh, so you're keeping track of every new retailer yes. that opens up across the country? <laughs> well, we just lost another guitar exactly. sale. <laughs> oh, great. Somebody else opened another one. No, I don't. Honestly, I don't think it changes our, our dynamic that much, other than, like I said, a little more competition. It changes a little bit of the dynamic between people like Amazon and Sweetwater. Those are the people because they are uh, Sweetwater, not so much. They offer a special kind of service, but Amazon's and those larger warehousing retailers. That changes a little bit because the, they get a little advantage on the the uh, ability to sell cheaper and also be the source for that product. And they're going to have to do much better at marketing online. They but again, I just don't for... think it's going to change anybody's uh, business model. I don't think it's going to change anybody's opinion. You just got another retailer out there that we can fight with. I say wait for holiday season before any of us finally make that decision. I'm really curious to see what it's going to be uh, out of this. I agree with you, actually, mostly completely on this. I really do I think all these people who have come out with this solution of, uh, well, it hasn't affected us so much right now. That's that's all a bunch of garbage because it hasn't had a chance to. This kind of major change that's going to happen is going to foster over the next three years. Yeah, it's going to be turbulent for the next few years. They'll find ways. I, I foresee these manufacturers finding ways to make dealers happy by saying, all right, these these ones we won't mess with we're not going to be any discounts on these uh, or even we may not even sell these direct over this period um like i'm speaking specifically the holiday sales and all that stuff i think they'll find a way sure to make I, it I right for that. their their, their, their retailers and the then blowback will happen they'll find an equilibrium and then we'll end up uh four or five years from now in the same position think uh, worrying about the next amazon that came along or the fact that Walmart now has robots that hold the gun to our head if we don't purchase from wow. their stores. That's, I heard it's coming. Dark, it's, it's, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. So in the end, selling directly to the consumers, nothing we can do about it except nope. up our game. Uh, try Is to it going to sure. change how we do anything? I want to ask each one of you guys. Do you uh, foresee a point where we have to – change what we're doing our direction I think, I think we're always changing what we're doing i think that i'm so saying specifically a, does this no for that to no. change 
for that marketing. Yeah. No, I don't. It's we have we have come to a conclusion, and I think mo- a lot of retailers, especially the best ones out there, have come to a conclusion that the only way to win in this world is to out service, out customer service, the next best thing out there. And if you figure out a way to do that and service your customer better, you can always win them back. And sometimes even not with just giving them lower prices, but actually giving them a better experience, experience. in buying the uh, whatever yeah. product it happens. Because like you said in the beginning, there's two there's two buyers. There's the people that care about customer service and there's the people that care about getting it fast and cheap. And then there's Chat GPT, mm-hmm. who will actually have by then have taken over the entire world. Well, by the way, they uh, they just did this whole podcast for us. <laughs> I'm not even here. I'm not even here. So <laughs> anyway, what do you think, Jerry? Are we changing? I, I don't think I think what we've been doing has helped us uh, accidentally make it through these waters. So being that we're already putting so much into customer service, customer experience, the reviews, the custom photos for every instrument that comes through here, serialized, all those things that have been a success up to this point for us, I think it helps insulate us from what those guys can't really put that much time and effort into doing. Uh, it helps to be the small guy because you're a little bit more nimble and you can do things a little bit quicker than them because they they have so much going on that it's going to be hard for them to really service at this level. Um, so I think we'll just double down on that, which we would have done anyway. Yeah. It, business has never been fair. I mean, that's kind of why capitalism works is there's always somebody out there that's going to come up with something, have some slight advantage that you've got to overcome. I mean, if you're in the NFL and you got Tom Brady on another team, you don't just throw in the towel, right? You just say, all right, let's, let's I start. Never, I was never I Brady Let's start under inflating the, the footballs. I'm not no, a Brady fan, Tom guys. I just yeah. don't, I would throw something at Tom. I don't know. <laughs> Tom wouldn't do anything. <laughs> I don't necessarily like that guy. No. <laughs> I admire him, winning. but I don't like him. <laughs> anyway, so we're not changing. We're not changing. Uh, the world's not coming to an end. Nope. Um, are you going to buy a Martin directly from Martin? I probably won't, but uh, no. I know that there will be some either. people that will. Do you think will? Eastman's going to go direct? It's possible. As I of right now, the they say no, but there's a time. Bear, bear, they say no until they, they do. I That's what everybody says. I think no if, the other, if the other brands have some success in it, other ones are going to say, why it, not? It Here's the deal. This is them, absolutely like an experiment right now, and I don't care what any of these brands say. They are experimenting with it, and if it fails and blows up in their face, they're going to back away from it and pretend it never happened. If they're it goes go, great, you know what? Go, if we're really ah, successful, we but uh, we get we your point now, you. and we understand that the dealers <laughs> are, the are really do. wanting us not to do it, so we're it's not going to do it It's never, we made a mistake. It's always, uh, we heard you guys, and you were right. We we shouldn't have been uh, mean to we'll you. We'll take the hit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So buy a guitar. There it was buy guitars. Either way, whoever you buy it from, enjoy it, play it. Yeah, live in this world. It's fun. Yeah, you're still part of the acoustic community. Guitars, banjos, mandolins, and uh, basses are neat. Fiddles, not so much. There's a big <laughs> deal. There's never going to be a good Amazon mandolin ever. Mm. They all come with the foam under the bridge. There's not a good mandolin. <laughs> all, right. all right, guys. We will see you on another future podcast yeah. where we talk about other things. The Acoustic Shop knows people. Handmade by Trent Pruitt, Hinkley Hinkleston, and Jason Chapman for The Acoustic Shop. Theme song written and performed by Ofra Corin. And please remember to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.